let's get down to it then. So I have sort of a roadmap of where I want to get to in the next two days. Um, we are going to hopefully make it to one of my favorite theorems of in real analysis, which has to do with um, series. Um, we are uh, talking about series, though. Remember last time we discussed the geometric series, which is of this form, 1 over um, 1 over uh, r what am I? 1 over r squared or n squared or something. Yeah, this, and, and it converges to 1 over 1 minus r when um, absolute value r is less than 1. And when um, r is uh, absolute value r greater than 1, it diverges, right? This is called the geometric series. Um, there are several other, you know, standard series that people talk about a lot. And when you're trying to um, measure sort of which series converge and which don't, there are various tests for convergence that you probably learned in your calculus class. So I, I don't want to emphasize these uh, convergent, convergence tests so much, but can I just say there are several convergence tests. I want to talk about one of them uh, just because I feel like we, sh we should talk about uh convergence tests uh, just a little bit at least. Um, um, I would like to talk about something, I'll call this a theorem, this is called the comparison test. This is, uh, all of these tests are meant to um, give you a way to figure out if I just show you a series, can you tell me if it converges or not? And if so, what does it converge to? Um, all of these tests are meant to help you do that in one way or another. And the comparison test is what you use if you have another series and you know that it converges or diverges. Um, can you compare that with, uh, with, a, uh, with another series? Uh, here's here's um, what it's all about. So in this case, you have two different sequences, A, K, B, K. And the B, K is bigger than the A, Ks, and we're assuming that they're all positive. All right, and then there are two things that it says. They are um, so the A's are less than the B's, right? The um, the idea here is that when the A's are less than the B's, if the B's converge, then the A's also converge. Uh, by which I mean, if the series of the B's converges, then the series of the A's also converges. So that's what I'm going to say first. If the sum B K converges, then the sum AK converges. And what it converges to will be less than the other thing. The sum of AK is less than or equal to the sum of the BKs, right? If the A's are less than the B's, then what they converge to is less than what the other thing converges to. Now, this, um, from a certain point of view, it maybe seems obvious. If the A's are less than the B's and the B's converge, then doesn't that sort of automatically mean the A's should converge? Um, and they're, they're all positive, so it's not like the A's go, go out to negative infinity. Um, it's not actually so obvious because the B's converging, it means that the A's, this sum, cannot go out to infinity because the B's actually goes to a particular value. But it may be that this sum sort of, um, as we keep on adding more and more terms, maybe the, the value kind of oscillates or something. Um, it, we know that it, it can't go out to infinity, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it converges, right? It will be bounded, but maybe it still doesn't mean that it converges. Okay, so it's slightly less obvious than it might seem, uh, but it, it's really not so difficult. And then the other kind of comparison, so the first one says that if the B's converge and the A converges, the second one says, if the A's diverge, if the sums of the AK diverges, then, anybody want to shout out what's the conclusion in this case? The sum of the BK's diverges. Yeah, then the sum of the B's diverges, right? Because the A's, again, in this, you know, in both cases, the A's are less than the B's. So if I'm saying the sum of the A's diverges, then the sum of the B's diverges, right? 
That one maybe should seem a little more obvious. If the, if the sum of the a's is like going to infinity, then the sum of the b's also should be going to infinity. Although diverging doesn't necessarily mean going to infinity. But anyway, um, I would like to talk in detail about the first one because um, actually I think uh, the first one, so I want to do the proof of just number one. The proof of number two will be similar. Um, one reason I wanted to talk about it is because we're going to use some uh, some old school facts, which might be nice for us to review for the purposes of the final exam. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's get down to it. Remember, what it means for the series to converge is that the sequence of partial sums converges. So uh, let's call the partial sums. Let's call them say S K. I'm going to let S K be the sum of the first k things from A. And I also want a name for the sums of the b, so I'll call that tk. So these are the partial sums. And then we are assuming that bk converges. That's what number one says. If B, the, uh, the series of the BK converges, then the series of the AK converges. So we assume that the sum of BK converges. So that means the limb of the TK exists, right? Because that's, that's what the series means. The, when I say the series converges, that means that the uh, sequence of the partial sums converges, all right? Okay, uh, something that I will point out is the SKs and the TKs. So uh, since the A, oh, sorry. Since the AK and the BK are positive, SK and TK are increasing sequences. Right, check it out. SK looks like this, right? And then what about like the next one would be SK plus one is the same stuff, but then plus another thing, plus AK plus one. That's gotta be bigger than SK, right? Every time you take another one of these A's and add it on, you're just gonna get something bigger. That means this sequence SK is increasing. Every next term is always bigger than the previous. That's because these come from adding these things up and um, all the things you're adding up are positive, which means the sums, they get bigger every time you add another one. It, it increases, right? So uh, this, the sums uh, SK and also the TKs are the same because they involve Bs and all the Bs are positive. So these are increasing sequences, right? Um, I would like to show that the, um, we want to show that the A's converge, right? So I want to show that the series AK converges. That is to say, i.e. that um, the sequence SK converges. And then we will use, here's a, uh, a classic, the monotone convergence theorem. That is to say, if a sequence is out let's see if we can fill in the blanks then it converges anybody remember the monotone convergence theorem is it monotone and bounded monotone and bounded right and monotone of course means either increasing or decreasing and in this case uh, they are increasing so that's that's one hint about how we're going to use this, and bounded, all right? So, the um, to show that the sum, uh, that SK converges, can I just say it's enough to show that SK is monotone and bounded. Because I want to show that it converges, and by the monotone convergence theorem, um, it will converge, provided that it's monotone and bounded. We already said that it's increasing. That's because you keep on adding little bits to it. So we already know 
it's increasing, which means it's monotone, right? Monotone just means increasing or decreasing. It's also bounded since... Any thoughts about this one? How do you know that SK is bounded? What we know about SK is, is this is what SK is. It's, a, it's all the sums of the A's. Anybody got a feeling about this? One important, we haven't really used this yet. Sorry, I don't know if you can still see it when I zoom in, when I zoom out that far. But remember this, AKs are less than BKs. Does that help at all? What do you think? Would SK have to be between 0 and TK? Uh, yes, I would say so. Each of the A's is less than each of the B's, so I would say SK is less than or equal to TK. And they, yeah, it's also between zero, uh, that's true. Um, this, of course, does not um, necessarily mean it's bounded because these can change every time. You need to say that SK is less than a, like a specific value. How do you know, like, do we know, for instance, that the TKs are bounded? Uh, what do we know about the TKs? We said up here. We know that the limit exists. Yes. That, so that means that it is bounded. Yeah, right. Uh, since the TKs is a sequence and it does converge, that means it is bounded. This is some, another sort of blast from the past. Um, every convergence sequence is bounded because if it's, um, well, if it's not bounded, then it cannot converge. So if it does converge, then it must be bounded. So it's bounded since... Um, SKs are less than TKs, and TK is bounded, right? Since it converges. All right. And so that means, let me just, I mean, we've said all the parts. Let me just in conclude here. So uh, SK is monotone and bounded. So the sum of the AK, which is equal to lim of the SK, converges. All right. That's all there is to it. This is the um, comparison test for series. Oh, sorry. All right. Um, this is useful when you already know about some other series that converges. You can use that to show some lesser series also converges. Or if you know something diverges, you can use it to show that other things diverge by, by comparing the uh, series with each other. I think you probably did a lot of examples with this and other convergence tests in your calculus class. Um, I hope so. Any questions about that? This is the comparison test. This is the only one of those tests that I really wanted to talk about. I thought it was interesting just because it uses the monotone convergence theorem, and I hope that you still remember the monotone convergence theorem. Any, uh, any comments or questions about that one? All right, let's do another interesting example. You know, we talked about the geometric series last time. There's another very, um, you know, commonly uh, occurring series, which is called the harmonic series. The harmonic series is this, the sum n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n, all right? Uh, the partial sums, if you were to write them out, would be, you know, 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth, all right, etc. This is called the, well, no, sorry, the partial sum would be this, right? SK is the sum of the first K terms, would be 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth up to 1 over K, okay? 
what about this series? Um, does this series converge? This one, uh, I have, I am, I have always been kind of surprised by this fact, and you know, all I learned this when I was in college, and um, after all these years, it still kind of surprises me. This does not converge. So if you are adding up like this, and you just keep on adding the next term here, 1 over uh, k plus 1, 1 over k plus 2, um, those terms are very small. Like when k is big, if k is like a million, you're eventually adding up. The things that you're adding onto this list are super tiny, right? Uh, 1 over a million, 1 over a million plus 1. It turns out, though, this does not converge. Like this thing, when you add it up, it actually does sort of go to infinity. Like these little bits that you're adding on on the end, they are little bits, but they're sort of big enough to go out to infinity. This is, this is a, a, a strange, uh, surprising fact, in my opinion. And uh, like I said, um, you know, my, my mathematical life has been uh, fairly long by now, I guess. Uh, but it still surprises me, this fact, that this harmonic series does not converge. It actually sort of adds up to infinity even though the things that you're adding are quite small. Um, it doesn't converge. I want to see if I can convince you of that. Um, we don't have to do, it's, uh, there's not like a, a long involved proof of this fact. It's sort of a, um, a cute trick that you do to demonstrate this. So I would like to consider, let's just look if uh, we look at something that looks like S, 2 to the k. So really I'm looking at a subsequence. I don't want to consider all the sks. I just want to look at the ones which are powers of 2, where the k is a power of 2. And it turns out you can show that these ones will uh, will go out to infinity. They will diverge when the k is large. Uh, here, here's what it looks like. Well, first of all, s2 to the k, if I were to write it out, of course looks like this. One one third, uh, etc up to 1 over 2 to the k, All right? Um, and this, here's the, here's the sort of simple tricks. I'm going to re-sort of group this together like this. 1 third plus 1 fourth. I'm going to consider that like as one thing. And then 1 fifth plus up to 1 eighth. I'm grouping these together in terms of the powers of 2s. The next block will be 1 ninth up to 1 16th, etc. And then eventually I'll end up with some stuff up to 1 over 2 to the k, right? I am grouping these blocks together according to powers of 2, where the 1 and the half, they just kind of by themselves. But the, re the rest I'm, uh, I'm grouping into blocks, all right? And then I'm going to do a inequality here. This is greater than 1 plus 1 half plus... Okay, check it out. I'm going to change everything inside this first block. I'm changing to a fourth, which is the smallest, which is why this, um, this inequality is going the way it is. So this is a fourth plus a fourth. In the next block, I'm going to make these all equal an eighth. Next, I'll make these all 1 16th, and so on. And so the final block here is all 1 over 2 to the k's. All right. Um, I chose the smallest of each block and, like, duplicated it. And so the whole thing has become smaller. All right. But we can simplify this. What do you think? 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. Would you believe me if I said this is 1 half, isn't it? Because it is, because I know how to add fractions. What about that block of one eighths? What does that add up to? It's also one half, right? Aren't there four of them in there? Um, this one also adds up to one half because there are four four of them in there, and they are you know all one eighth each. What about the next one? The next one, there are eight of them. If you, you know, you can look like right here, you can tell there, there are eight things in there. Eight things in that block. They're all 1 over 16, so when you add them up, you get 8 over 16, which is a half. Uh, actually, I, 
this whole cute trick was meant to get a half every time. Even the last one, uh, you'll have to think a little bit about this, but the last one, there are two to the k minus one terms in the last block there, and um, they're all two to the k. You get one half, all right? And then what is this? Well, it's just one plus a bunch of halves. In fact, if you, uh, if you count this up properly, you will dis discover that it's, there are k halves right there, all right? Because these are halves which started with 1 over 2 to the 1, then 1 over 2 to the 2, ending up with 1 over 2 to the k. So th there's k different blocks of halves there. All right? But this, check it out. So that means s sub 2 to the k is greater than 1 plus k over 2, right? k times a half. But this, if I think of this as a sequence, this here diverges, doesn't it? As the k goes to infinity, that that sequence also goes to infinity, right? It's k over 2, but, you know, it still goes to infinity. Uh, so, that means, according to the comparison test, the s to the 2k cannot converge, all right? So, by the comparison test, s 2 to the k also diverges. That's because it's bigger than the uh, thing on the right. Actually, this is not really the comparison test. It's the it's the the rules about limits. Because at this point, I'm not talking about a series. I'm just talking about sequences here. So I shouldn't have said comparison test. By the um, really, it, it's what our book calls the order limit theorem. Right. If you have a sequence and one sequence is always greater than the other and the smaller one diverges, that means the bigger one also must diverge. All right. Sorry about that. I said it wrong the first time, but it doesn't matter because you already did the evaluation thing. I can say whatever I want now. Um, all right. So anyway, uh, S to the two, S sub 2 to the K diverges, and that means so SK diverges, right? S2 to the K is a subsequence, and as we know, if there's a subsequence which diverges, then the whole sequence uh, must diverge. And so that means that the sum, the original sum, diverges. The series, right? Remember, this whole thing was, was an attempt to figure out something about the series. But the sequence of partial sums diverges, which means the series diverges. All right. That's how it it is. Any uh, any thoughts about this? This is the harmonic series. Even though you're adding very very small bits onto the end every time, um, it still diverges, goes out to infinity, just like very very slowly goes out to infinity. All right. Excellent. Strange but true fact. Um, I said I had sort of a destination in mind for our last two days. We got ten more minutes left. Um, the last, my my destination involves some very strange things that can happen when you start playing around with the signs in a series. So I would like to discuss a a slight variation on the harmonic series. It's called the alternating harmonic series, and the only difference is. We play around with the signs a little bit, plus or minus signs. The alternating harmonic series. Uh, that is this. Minus 1 to the power n over n. All right. This is called the alternating harmonic series. And if you, if you wanted to you know, write out the terms, it begins with minus 1 and then plus a half, minus a third, plus a fourth, minus a fifth. All right. This is the alternating harmonic series. So what about convergence of this one? Um, does this one also diverge? So the one we were just talking about is when is the same, but uh, come on now. My pen. All right. The one we were just talking about is the same, only there's no minus signs. It was just plus every time. That one diverges, but this one, it might converge. You should feel like maybe it does converge because this is like lesser, right? Like some of these things, there will be cancellation when you're adding all these numbers up. 
So maybe it doesn't go out to infinity. Maybe, um, maybe it sort of stabilizes at some finite value. Or maybe, I suppose, maybe it goes to minus infinity this time because a lot of these have become a negative. Although, I don't know if it's, is there enough so that it goes completely the other way. Um, and if you don't know, does this converge or not, you can try to use the comparison test, but um, we don't have another good thing to compare this to. It's less than the normal harmonic series, but the harmonic series diverges. To say this is less than the one that diverges, doesn't that doesn't tell you anything. Um, if you really don't know, you can always try to compute these terms. And I, I thought this might be uh, fun to look at. I actually tried to convert like hundreds of these partial sums. So these sums would look like, oops, what I want to know is, you know, S1 is just negative 1. S2 is minus 1 plus a half. S3 is minus 1 plus a half minus a third. And you could plug these into your calculator and see if it converges to, everything, to anything. Of course, you wouldn't want, really want to use it, you know, a handheld calculator. I did this using um, Excel. I'm going to try to show it to you. So, yeah, here we go. Here we go. All right. I hope you can see this. Can somebody say, yeah, I see that? Yeah. All right. Thank you. At least one of you sees it. So what I have here is um, these are the n's. They just go one, two, three, uh, you know, etc. These are the an's. So in, and I don't know if this may be too small for you to see the formula here, but it just says minus one to the n divided by n. So that's what each of these are. You have negative one and then a half and then negative a third and then a fourth, etc. Right. And then over here, this column is s n. What I did was this is if you know how to use Excel, this is very easy to do. Um, each of these represents just adding up the first bunch of, uh, of the previous column. So it starts at minus one, then minus a half. That's because that's what you get when you do minus one plus a half. And then so on. Um, what uh, do these values actually approach anything? Well, I'm just going to scroll down here. Now at this point, actually, it does look, I mean, it doesn't look like these values are going to infinity or minus infinity. It looks like they're going to something. Uh, I'm going to scroll way down here. I took this out to 500 terms, and it seems to me these definitely are not going out to infinity, right? They they seem to be around negative 0.69 something, right? And if you wanted to, you could go even further. I even made a little chart. Check this out. You see this chart? Um, what you see in the chart is just I plotted those terms of the sequence, the partial sums, and you can see they kind of bounce back and forth between being uh, something up there and then something down there. That's because of the alternation of the signs. Every other thing is getting added and then the other ones are being subtracted. So you go, it bounces back and forth. But if you ask me, it definitely looks like it converges to something. And here ends the Excel portion of this class. Um, let me switch back to my own self. Okay, so can I say, I hope you will agree with me, it looks like this series, AK, um, converges. And, you know, if you believe those calculations, it looks like this is about something like negative 0.69, right? Um, in fact, it is this. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to go through it because it's not. It's not very. Um, it's not very straightforward. But you can actually demonstrate. You can calculate this series, and uh, you will. You will immediately see why it's not uh, straightforward. Uh, I'll just say it turns out that the sum a k equals. Anybody recognize this number? Negative point six nine. Probably not. It's equal to um, negative the natural log of 2. I, I guess you guys don't recognize the digits of the natural log of 2. Uh, I wouldn't either. Um, so uh, this is a very, it's, you have to use some, some kind of wild uh, tricks to compute that. I mean, it, it must be wild, whatever you're doing, if you get the natural log of 2 as the answer. Uh, it, you can't get that by doing simple uh, adding things up. But uh, anyway... It does converge. That's all I want to say, or that's that's what I want to um, impress on you. This sum minus one to the n over n, n equal one to infinity, does converge. All right, it converges to that number, 
negative uh, natural log of 2, but I, I don't care so much about what the number is. All right. In the remaining five minutes, though, I'm going to show you something that's a little crazy that, that is to set the stage for what we're talking about next time. So this series does converge. Let's just say I'm going to let, I'm going to write it as S. So that, that number, which is actually negative ln of 2, but I'm just going to write it as S for now. All right. I would like to consider, check this out. S, of course, um, it is, you know, what it is, right? It's uh, minus one plus a half minus a third plus a fourth minus uh, a fifth plus etc. Right? So that means, what have you got if you multiply S by one half? Well, you can just distribute the one half through. We actually had a rule about a uh, series, if a series converges, and you multiply by constant, then that's the same as multiplying each term by the same constant. That that was a thing that we talked about already. Um, I'm going to write this, but I'm going to try and, on my paper, I'm going to sort of space these out a little bit. So it is minus a half plus a fourth. I'm going to space them out, because you'll see why in a moment. Minus a sixth plus a eighth minus a tenth plus etc. All right. Um, and right under that, I'm going to write S again. But this time I'm going to sort of fill in the blanks, right? It's 1 minus, no, it's minus 1 plus a half minus a third plus a fourth. I'm trying to line these up so that my intention next will be to add these things up vertically. And you'll see some weird, some weird action is going to happen. Uh, pl uh, minus one ninth plus one tenth, etc. All right, and I'm gonna try to add vertically here. So add like this, right? Ah, get out of here. Did I get something wrong? No, I think I think down here is is right. Because in here, this is S, and I'm just alternating the signs every time. And you will notice it's a little strange, but like sometimes they have the same sign when they appear both, but sometimes they have opposite signs. And that's not that's not a mistake. That's actually how it works out. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Uh, so when I add them, you will see it's not that a whole bunch of stuff cancels. Like some of them do cancel, but actually some of them combine and add together. So let's see what happens. Um, on the left side of the equal sign, you get a half s plus s. So that's three halves s. On the right side of the equal sign, like I said, some things will cancel, but some things will, will combine. What I get is minus one first doesn't, doesn't cancel or anything. Then the one halves do cancel. Let me, maybe I'll just sort of cross off the ones that do cancel. It's sort of like every other one cancels up top. What happened? Oh, am I okay? Something crazy is going on with my computer. Oh, sorry. My, um, my computer just decided to start backing up the hard drive right now. Uh, can you all, you can still hear me? See me? Yeah, yeah okay. Um, so, some of them cancel, some do not cancel. All right, let's just do this. We've only got a minute. Minus a third here, and then I got plus a fourth and plus a fourth. I'm gonna add those together and get plus a half, right? And then minus a fifth, doesn't cancel anything. The sixths go away, minus a seventh. Okay, then I have plus one eighth, plus one eighth. They add together to give me one fourth. All right, then I have minus a ninth. The tenths goes away, but I, I don't know. And it continues, all right? What you see here, it's not quite obvious, but this right there, these terms are the same as S. 
with the same signs. Right? I see minus one here. I see plus a half. Minus a third is here. Plus a fourth is here. Minus the fifth is here. There is a plus a sixth. It would come when I added the two twelfths over here. You get a plus a sixth. And then I get minus a seventh. There is going to be plus a eighth. It comes when you add two sixteenths over here. You get a plus a eighth. All right. These are the same as S with the same signs. But I will say um, rearranged, right? They're in a different order. But otherwise, it's the same as, as S, right? So, 3 half S actually adds up to S again. And then this, um, sorry, would you, would you allow me to continue for just one more minute? The only way that is possible is if S equals zero, right? 3 halves S equal S. That S is, is a number that, that just is not allowed unless S is zero. So S is zero, all right? But, um, Actually, S is not zero, right? We just, I mean, according to my Excel calculations, whatever it is, is definitely not zero, right? In fact, if you believe me, it is negative um, ln of two. So, something, something's uh, messed up here. What went wrong in what I did here? Uh, you might think maybe this is not quite right. Do you really believe that you get everything in here, this entire list, like all the terms actually? You know, I said like you don't see one six here, but it actually, it does come from adding the one twelfths. Um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to pull any funny business on you. Actually, this really is all the same as S. So, but of course, this conclusion here cannot be true because that would mean that S is zero. So this conclusion is false. Our only option then, as, as far as what is going on here, how could, how could all of this um, actually be true? It is a simple fact. So here's a crazy fact, which I will discuss more next time. Rearranging a series can change the value. This is one of the, uh, I, I am still sort of mystified by this fact. I think it's really uh, kind of an amazing fact. It is a true fact though. Rearranging a series can change the value. So what I said here, I was trying to be very uh, explicit about this. Oops, I'm trying to use my pointer here. What I said right here, these are the same terms as S with the same signs, but they are rearranged. And it turns out, the fact that we rearrange them actually makes them add up to a different number. This, you should feel, is totally crazy. Of course, this cannot happen with uh, just adding finitely many things together. You can rearrange a sum of finite things and you get the same answer. But it turns out, in a series, an infinite series, sometimes when you rearrange it, you get a different answer. And we will say much more about this uh, next time. I think that'll do. Sorry, I went a couple minutes extra. We do have homework, uh, as usual, due tomorrow. Hope you've had a chance to check it out. Let me know if you have questions. See you tomorrow.